awesome. We've been in a series that we're calling The Story. And we've been looking at the Christmas story. And we've been talking about, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about uh, Mary, Joseph, the angels. Last weekend, we talked about the shepherds. And tonight, guess which character of the Christmas story we're going to be talking about? You guessed it, the innkeeper. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus, baby Jesus, little baby Jesus. We're going to talk about Jesus tonight, little baby Jesus. And what I especially want to focus our attention on is these words from Luke that Cor so awesomely read earlier. For unto you is born this, uh, is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That's what I want to focus on. I couldn't kind of shake that the other day when I, was, when I was kind of reading through this and wondering how the Lord would lead. A Savior has been born. What does it mean to, what, what is a Savior? You know, we have some different ways of thinking about a Savior, don't we? We have like, uh, we have like the guy who runs in and grabs you uh, because you, you, from a burning fire or something like that, a burning building, yeah, burning fire, a uh, burning building. And, and somebody can't breathe because there's no more oxygen. And so somebody runs in and saves them. And we'd be like, that guy saved that guy. But at the same time that we might talk about some like savior like that, we also have this kind of, sometimes we'll, we'll use saving like, um, you know, I haven't had my coffee in the morning and somebody comes and hands me a cup and I'm some, I say something like, man, you're a lifesaver. You totally saved me, right? And so we kind of have this, we have this range of meaning for Savior. It's interesting, the Greek word here is a word called soter. And soter can mean Savior, but it can also mean deliverer. Uh, the Savior or deliverer. And, and as I was thinking about delivery, I was thinking, man, we have some extremes there too, don't we? Like I've been through, you know, I got five kids and I was in the delivery room for all of them. And that delivery is an intense thing, right? I mean, we're talking a violent, uh, I don't know, what. I got to be careful a little bit. But this violent, just uh, terrible stuff is happening to move one person from a, a person over here to, a, to get that person over here. You know what I'm saying? I, I think you know what I'm saying. I mean, delivery can be an intense thing, but then at the same time, somebody can bring me my mail and delivery happened. You know what I mean? Like they delivered my mail. That's maybe less intense. So when we think of Jesus as our Savior, what do we think about? What comes to our mind? Now, if you're like this really holy, Christian, pure person or whatever in here, you know, you, you kind of have these things in your mind that just, Christmas is kind of automatic. And I always want to like stop us in our track with, tracks with some of this stuff because I want us to kind of let God actually talk to us instead of us just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? What does that mean that God would be our Savior? And as we think about salvation or being needing a Savior of, of some kind, I think we can sometimes think of, see, we, we take the Christmas story and we make it nice. We make it cute. We make it, um, and so what happens is Jesus becomes like a good guy. The little baby in the manger and what we think about him becomes like maybe a good guy who comes to maybe, to maybe help us out a little bit, to be kind of this like, you know, you know, I could make my own coffee, but, but you know, you handed me a cup and I'm kind of in need. Hey, Jesus, you're a lifesaver. You know, I, most of the stuff that I do in my life, I can kind of handle on my own. But once in a while, you're a pretty good dude who comes along and kind of helps me out in a pinch or something like that. Or maybe he's not just a good dude. Maybe he's like a good teacher. That's pretty much what our society today thinks about Jesus. Jesus is a good teacher who comes and basically tells us what we should do and what we shouldn't do, while at the same time 
leaving out a lot of what he says so that we can kind of make it sound how we want it to sound so that Jesus is a good moral teacher or something like that. That's pretty much what people think of Jesus today. He's a guy, he's a pretty good dude who comes and, and either maybe helps us out in a pinch and can kind of help us out with maybe something I can't quite figure out in this moment, or he's a good teacher who brings me maybe just some good teaching of some kind that if I apply it and do it, that my life will be maybe better or something like that. I think we turn Jesus as deliverer and savior. Sometimes we think of that more along the lines of delivering us mail or giving us a cup of coffee once in a while um, when we kind of need a little pick-me-up. What's he saying here? What is the angel? The angel was sent to say a savior has been born in the city of David, a savior. Luke, the guy who wrote uh, the, what we're kind of focusing on in the Bible, there's a guy named Luke who wrote the gospel of Luke. That's what we've been reading from tonight. And um, Luke has some theme. Uh, he has different themes that he writes about. One of his themes as you read through the Gospel of Luke, is that Jesus is the Savior. And you can see this, and i got a couple scripture verses up here that we're just going to quickly look at, from Luke chapter 1, verse 47. This is Mary singing about Jesus, about God, about what's going on inside of her. She's pregnant at this point, and she says this, And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And then, if you jump a little bit forward, there's a, there's a guy named Zechariah who's right here, like in the same chapter of Luke. There's a guy named Zechariah who, who, who does a, a, kind of shares a prophetic word, and he says this in verse 68. He says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he's raised up a horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved. That we should be saved. If you go to verse 77, he says this, to give the knowledge of salvation. Notice what he connects salvation to here. The knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of sins. And then if you jump forward to chapter 7, you just kind of move a little bit forward. Chapter 7, verse 50. He actually forgives the sins of a woman. Which is, quite honestly, a claim to be God himself in the forgiving of sins even there. But chapter 7, verse 50, Jesus says this. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you after he's just forgiven her sins, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Notice that. Notice that this salvation that Jesus brings will actually bring us peace. We saw this in course reading from Luke. The angels say what they say. A Savior has been born. And then, verse 14, I don't have it on the screen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Keep going with me, Luke chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. Jesus is dealing with a guy named Zacchaeus. And he says this, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to what? Save. Seek and to save. Jesus has come to save us. If you jump outside of Luke, we're just going to look at one verse because it's just so succinct and so tight. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. This is said to Joseph of Jesus before he's been born. I preached on this uh, three weeks ago when we looked at Joseph. Verse 21. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. For why? He will save his people from their sins. He's going to save us. He's not coming to the world to just mess around or be cute or you know, poop and pee in the diaper kind of thing. And, and just, you know, he has come. Christmas is about 
God saving you. That's what Christmas is about. God coming to save you. He's the Savior of the world. I don't know about you, but if it was the first time you're hearing that, which a lot of you have heard that before, but if it's the first time you're hearing it, you might even say something like, that seems like overkill. Like, that seems intense, that God would have to come, put on flesh, become incarnate. That's the word for, for the incarnation, for the God putting on flesh in the baby of, now Jesus, that seems intense. And then he's got to go to the cross and die and, and then rise again on Easter Sunday. See you back in a couple months. Um. He's got to do that to save us? See, here's my thought. Follow me on this. The, the size of the saving has to be correlated and kind of connected to the size of the problem. See, a lot of you think the problem, a lot of times even myself, I think of the problem as, as small. Now, still significant. We'll still talk about it in a significant way. But it's not something we couldn't deal with on our own. Maybe the problem is our finances. Or maybe the problem is I can't get married. Or my kids don't listen to me. Or I have cancer. I mean, again, some of these can be significant. But we might engage and hear about and feel some of these problems. But it's like, well, at least I could maybe kind of engage that problem and engage that problem. And I can kind of manage it. And what makes me nervous sometimes is that we think of the deep problems of our heart and life as manageable. As if we can kind of control how, how those things get dealt with. But see, the problem, the problem is that, is that those things are kind of a byproduct of deeper heart issues. Deeper heart issues. And see, Jesus came to deal with the deepest and darkest heart issues that we have. He came to save us from the deepest problems in our heart. Things you might not even be aware of. That's why he came. He came to, to save you because he's the Savior. You are, we are, I am a sinner. I'm broke. What does that mean? Well, we could sit here and talk about this a lot, but it, I'm I'm broken. We feel this every time we do something that we know we shouldn't do or we don't do something that we know we should do. We're broken. We're a sinner in need of restoration. We are going to die. <laughs> uh, some of you who are a little older, I'm not looking at anybody. But some of you who are a little older, maybe know and have experienced this even more so as you've had friends and neighbors and loved ones and you get the phone call and you keep getting the phone call and somebody, somebody's always dying. And it's this constant reminder, right? That we die. That's a problem. That's a problem. And your local doctor and stuff, it's great having them for, you know, some of the good stuff once in a while. But to help you with that problem. Uh, demons. Some of you would really be able to speak to this better than I even maybe can speak it out right now. But some of the demons or spiritual forces of evil that you've dealt with that you know that you've experienced the, the power of these things in your life as they've influenced you or maybe even been a kind of burden or weight or darkness or hole that you've been in with them. Um, you know the kind of power that's there that you simply can't grab, you know, a, a 1911 or something like that 
and just take care of the problem. Like the spiritual forces of evil that, that are more powerful than us on our own. See, Jesus has come to save us. He's come to save you from these things. This is why he came. To, to bring restoration. To go. Here's the deal. He comes as a little baby to go to the cross. To go to the cross. To die on the cross. To shed his blood. And now he's actually got blood that's coming out of him because he is incarnate. He is God in the flesh. And so now he can die. And so God dies for you to save you from your sin, to pay the price for your sin, to then rise victoriously over death three days later, Easter. That's when we celebrate Easter. To save you even from death. To conquer the spiritual forces of evil. You know, tomorrow morning I'm going to be talking about this even in kind of a, a kind of unique kind of way of, of, of how God does this from the book of Colossians. But he, he triumphs over this through his death and his resurrection. Why does he do this? For you. For salvation. To bring you true peace. Not just peace in one little area of your life, like, okay, I got peace in my finances. Why? Because my finances are in order. Or I don't have peace in my finances because my finances aren't in order. Or I have peace in my health because I'm pretty healthy right now. Or I'm not peaceful. And so we have all these little boxes where it seems like we have maybe sometimes peace and we're trying to control it all. No, no. Jesus came to bring you true peace to the deepest spot of your heart. And that comes when you recognize that he saved you. He saved you from the deepest and darkest stuff in your heart. True peace. Romans chapter 5, I don't have this on the screen, I don't think. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus is not just a good dude. Jesus is not just a good dude. He's not just a nice guy. He's not just this little cute little baby in a manger that's just cute and we, we kind of create Christmas around him and we kind of like create all the really important stuff around him. No, no, no. That's not what Christmas is. He is our Savior who comes in a manger. What a story. What a story. Bringing you, offering you true peace. True peace. Tomorrow morning, some of you are going to wake up and a, a pipe is going to bust. I just got a feeling. I don't know. I'm sorry. You're going to wake up, some pipe is going to break, and you're going to be teed off because you're like, this is a Christmas I'm never going to forget. And that's going to be annoying as all get out, and it's going to be super frustrating, and it's going to be, and now I'm thinking it's going to be me. I don't know. <laughs> it is. It's going to be super annoying. I can, yeah, I can still remember a couple Christmas Sundays, uh, cr Christmas mornings ago, and we were getting ready for church, and we were just about to leave, and one of our kids broke uh, the nail polish all over the bathroom floor. And it was just like, well, here we go. Uh, but tomorrow morning, something's going to happen. Something's going to throw off your Christmas or something, or an uncle's going to say something, you're just going to want to just deck them or whatever. See, Jesus, he, Jesus cares about that stuff. He really does, which is why I encourage you to get connected to a local church where you can continue to hear about how God wants to engage you in your everyday walk with him. But, but I, what I really want you to hear tonight is that as much as he cares about that stuff, he does. But he came to bring you true peace. And even tomorrow when the pipe is breaking, there's water spraying all over, you I have peace with God. 
because of Jesus and what he's done for me. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this incredible news that the shepherds bring to us. Uh, the, the news that the angels gave to the shepherds and now the shepherds pass on to us and that we've gotten to hear as Luke did the work of, of, of talking to people and how that news, the good news of what you've done has been passed on. The, 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 the reality that you've come into the world to save us, God. Help us to not miss that this Christmas. Help us to not miss that. With that simple news also comes the reality that maybe some of us really have to deal with. That we actually need saved. And where the enemy has blinded somebody tonight with that, or where he's blinding maybe us to that reality and truth that we need saved, God, I pray that you would break through the, 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 the darkness of pride that's on that person so that we might see how desperate we are for your salvation. So that we might look to you as our Savior. And as we do that, Lord, and as you flood our life with incredible peace, knowing that we are saved. God, that you would work in that with a life change. God, I pray that for every single one of us in here today. That we would look to you as our Savior. Thank you that you came to save us. God with us, Emmanuel, a baby in a manger. What an incredible story, Lord. The story of reality that we get to be part of. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us that much. Thank you, Lord.